Dr. Belk, it's often claimed that animal agriculture is the biggest contributor to antibiotic resistance. Is that true? No, I don't think so. I think that antimicrobial resistance exists everywhere in the environments that we live in and that we function in. Um, CDC told, showed last year in their 2013 report that, uh, that it's primarily attributable to misuse in human medicine. Um, but even so, I think it's, it's important for all sectors of, of the food chain to use judicious guidelines in how they utilize and administer antimicrobials. Well, how does resistance develop? Well, it can develop a number of different ways. Um, think of it like survival of the fittest. Uh, when you have literally millions and millions of cells of bacteria present and you expose them to an antibiotic, uh, those that survive then are able to develop mutations or adapt genes from other organisms and incorporate those genes into their own makeup so that they ultimately can withstand treatment from for future antibiotics. And so uh, it's real easy for bacteria to do that. And when bacteria reproduce so quickly, a uh, generation is about 18 minutes in bacteria, um, then it's uh, several generations, you can incorporate new genetics into that gen those bacteria very easily. What has your research shown about antibiotic resistant bacteria? Uh, we've conducted a study where we identified cattle in several feedlots in the Midwest, in, in Colorado and Texas. Uh, we followed those cattle as they were fed in the feeding system and then harvested at packing plants. And uh, we identified antimicrobial resistance genes, 266 genes um, through the production system. So the genes were there, but when the product was produced from those same cattle in the packing plant, at the end of the, the line where they're actually packaged in vacuum package bags, uh, we sampled the product and we sampled belts and we found zero antimicrobial resistance genes. And to what do you attribute that? So what we think is happening is the systems that have been implemented in the industry to prevent the transmission of foodborne pathogens to consumers are also preventing the transmission of antimicrobial resistance to consumers. And, and really FDA has hypothesized that that was happening for years and years and, and finally we have some data to actually demonstrate it. But it seems like we're always hearing reports about media or consumer organizations running their own testing and saying, oh, we found in the retail marketplace, we found antibiotic resistant bacteria. I think those reports are misleading because uh, this is a very complex topic and, and uh, it, it's very easy to introduce genetics for antimicrobial resistance into any environment. So, for example, if you remove a product from a package in which there was originally no antimicrobial resistance genes and you handle it and you expose it to an environment in a new location, then you're exposing it to additional antimicrobial resistance genes. So there's antimicrobial resistance in bacteria all around us and so it's very easy for that to be um, incorporated into products that are then purchased by consumers. We hear a lot about MRSA. What can you tell us about the challenge of MRSA and, and is it really linked to meat and poultry? CDC has said that MRSA or methicillin resistant Staph aureus is not a consequence of use of antibiotics in agricultural production. It's a consequence of the use of antibiotics in uh, very confined facilities like hospitals and surgical suites. And you find contamination with MRSA or with Staph aureus that has become resistant in those kinds of locations. And so to blame MRSA on agricultural production is just not very knowledgeable because the Staphylococcus aureus are actually bacteria that are harbored in human beings all the time. What can consumers do to help combat antibiotic resistance? Um, I think there's several things they can do. Firstly, they can employ good handling practices in the home. Uh, firstly, they need to cook their foods, um, unless it's not supposed to be cooked. They should cook their foods, particularly their meat products. They should make sure that they don't allow cross-contamination of meat from other foods and vice versa. And uh, they need to follow their medical doc doctor's directions 
uh, regarding antimicrobial use in the home. Uh, when the doctor gives you a prescription for antibiotics, then they need to take all of those antibiotics so that they don't create residual antimicrobial resistance in bacteria in their own bodies. And that will help stem the tide of resistance.